Yo, what is up guys? Lone coming at you with a new tutorial. This one is going to be outlining how to make stamps and tracing them within RustEdit so you can make some pretty unique things within RustEdit itself. Um, to start, you're going to need two things. You're going to need RustEdit and you're going to need uh, whatever image or icons or multiple images that you would like to use to make stamps on your maps. Um, the only limitation that I'm aware of is that I believe the images do have to be a .png format. So I believe as long as they're within that range, you should be fine. Um, but most images uh, are going to vary within quality inside the editor. Uh, typically with more noise, like these, uh, this background stuff, you're going to get less quality per se, but you can still get the outlining and the gist of what you need. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, you're going to go ahead and open up the installation location where your Rust Edit is installed. Um, most of the time, it's going to be in like your C drive probably, just... Wherever it is, locate it, and then you're going to go to the Brushes folder. Within this Brushes folder, yours might be empty. Um, this is where we're going to add the logos or the icons or images that you're wanting to trace or stamp on your map. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drag those in. So I'm just going to minimize this a little bit, drag these right in. So now within our Rust Edit Brushes folder, we have these four icons. Now if we go back to Rust Edit. Go ahead and start it up. All right, so once your Rust Edit is up, you're just gonna click on Create New, or you can load your existing map. You're probably gonna load your existing map if you're interested in uh, branding your map or making a custom prefab for it. For the sake of video, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Create New. I'm just gonna make a terrain at about 510 height. For reference, the water level is always gonna be at 500. So you wanna do at least a meter above that. That way you don't have water on your terrain and then I like grass personally for my canvas if, to say the least so we'll go ahead and click create it's gonna create a quick flat map with nothing on it now whenever you added those two images or I'm sorry several images to that brushes folder within your rest edit um, location it adds to the terrain painter and the terrain tool section up here on the top right if you tap on that and scroll down you'll see these new icons appear that you wouldn't normally have. Um, so for instance, we're gonna go ahead and start with the Space Needle since it's the first one on here, and we'll paint it as snow. Now keep in mind, the size right now is set to five. So with the pixel limitation of the map itself, you're not gonna get the full quality of the Space Needle um, logo with that size. So the higher you bump it up, the better the quality is gonna be. So we're gonna go ahead and bump it up all the way and that is as good as this image is gonna get at the current state. Um, so this is plenty fine enough to trace out the, the shape how you would like it. I have already done this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just search it. Let's see, Seattle, oh, Space Needle logo is what I called it. Alrighty, so now that you have uh, your reference point to trace it, you can make it out of any prefabs you would like. Uh, for this instance, I use stone walls, tarps, the shading proc map, but you can use whatever you'd like. And then once you actually make the shape itself, you can resize it whenever you create it into a custom prefab. So you get a nice high quality uh, logo just by tracing an image off the internet. So what's also helpful about this stamping tool is not only you have the terrain painter so you can paint on all sorts of shapes and sizes so you can trace these out on your map if you ever wanted to. Additionally, you can use the terrain tool so how the terrain tool is beneficial is whenever you select your icon, let's just use the X for instance. We're going to bump up the quality because similar to the um, to the terrain painter, the quality is going to reflect the size. So the larger the size, obviously the, the more uh, pixels it can utilize. We'll just say somewhere around 80. So now you can see it bumps the terrain up within that area. So this is good. So if you wanted to add a logo to your map, We'll go ahead and press G to create the map to generate it, sorry. And now you can see a big X on our map. So that's an easy way to brand. And these are the splats. They don't actually modify the terrain other than just the paint. You can do this with any logo. So do tic-tac-toe if you wanted to. So that is how the terrain stamper and the terrain painter are beneficial to you 
Um, hope this tutorial helped you out a little bit, kind of eased you into using this tool. It is very useful for creating custom prefabs. I believe I even made one for this bell. Let me see. Yep, red bell. So I use this for a really small application uh, for an elevator. Let's see, elevator buttons. Yep. So in this very small prefab, I had a really high quality push button by using that bell. So you can achieve, achieve things just like this by using that stamper tool very easily. You just trace it out and then uh, make it into a prefab. To trace it out and make it into a prefab, for instance, I keep saying that, but I'm, uh, I'll actually show you what I mean. We're going to go ahead and use the IO handlers for this uh, example. I'm going to use the, we'll just say with the blue one. So these little IO handlers are very small. You have to stretch them out to get them a lot bigger. I'm not going to spend very much time making this bell high quality since I already have one made. So I'm just going to do a very rough sketch of one right quick. And I'll fast forward through this for you. All right, so by no means this is a perfect bell. Um, this is just for an example. You can go much higher quality if you spend a little bit more time. But now that we have our item roughly traced out, not perfect by any means, you'll go ahead and select every bit of the prefab itself. So in this case, it was six objects totally selected. And towards the bottom left, or wherever your prefab list is, yours may be on the right, yours may be on the left, you're going to have an option that says Quick Create from Selection. This is very handy to make that entire bell basically one shape. So we're going to go ahead and call it Blue Bell. Some copyright flags. So we're going to go ahead and click Convert Selection uh, to Group towards the bottom, and then click Save Prefab. What this does is basically tie in all those prefabs together to make one big shape. So instead of selecting individual prefabs, you now have one large bell, which you can resize, shape around however you'd like. Nothing perfect, looks more like a little triangle than it does a bell, but that's the gist of the idea, is just tracing out the, the stamps that you added from Google or wherever you got your logos from. Hope this tutorial helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below or join my Discord. There's a lot of helpful map makers in there that are um, super helpful to, to new map makers in the community. So if you have any questions, they're great about answering it. Um, but those links will be in the description. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video again. I will see you in the next one. Bye.